Hi guys. So today we are going to learn the concept of data, information, knowledge and wisdom. So that is the DIKW concept. So we will be covering the origin of DIKW hierarchy. So what do you mean by DIKW and the elaboration of ACOF's uh, DIKW definitions and we will see some examples of DIKW hierarchy as well. So let's start with the origin of this DIKW hierarchy. So you can see that this origin of DIKW elements and hierarchy are traced way back to the 80s. So the first known registration of this DIKW idea goes back to Eliot. So Eliot in 1934 in his poem named The Rock, he writes the following concepts. Where is the life we have lost in living? Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in the information? So clearly, it shows that Eliot is the first guy to describe the basic feature of this DIKW hierarchy. So now this hierarchy has constituted a fundamental framework for analyzing wide range of applications. So over a period of time, Various number of extensions and refinements of this hierarchy have been presented since the 80s and there is still a continuous discussion about these elements and the structure of this hierarchy as well. So as for all these uh, conceptual structures, interpretation are essential and so for the DIKW model as well. So these concepts of uh, what is a data, information, knowledge, wisdom are the building blocks of library and information science. So they form the foundation of the LIS discipline. So all these discussions and definition of these terms pervade the literature from introductory test book to theoretical research articles. So see how they have evolved from textbooks to research articles. So these expressions linking some of these concepts predate the development of information science as a field of study. But the first guy to put all these terms into a single formula was Russell Lincoln Akoff in the year 1989. So Akoff was actually a management consultant and a professor of management science at the Wharton School specializing in operations research and organizational theory. So his article formulating or data, information, knowledge, wisdom, that is the DIKW hierarchy, was given in the year 1988 as a presidential address to the International Society for General Systems Research. So that is where he first presented his idea. So Akov posited a hierarchy at the top of which lay wisdom. So wisdom will be the top and below that understanding, knowledge, information and data. So, in that order, he presented his hierarchy. Furthermore, he wrote that each of these includes the categories that fall below it. That means, uh, wisdom will be at the top, uh, knowledge will be the category that falls below wisdom, and similarly, information will be the category that falls below knowledge, and data will be the category that falls below information. So it is estimated on average about 40% of the human mind consists of data and 30% information, 20% knowledge, 10% understanding and virtually no wisdom. So this quote was given by Bernstein in his research article in the year 2009. So this phraseology allows us to view its model as a primitive. So it's a premit based model and indeed it has been likened to one ever since. So this is the one which we have liked and which we are following as of now. So we will now see what is this DIKW hierarchy. So according to Russell Eckhoff, the content of the human mind can be classified into five categories as I mentioned below. Data information, knowledge, understanding and wisdom. So data in the sense is he treats it as a symbol. So information means so data that are processed to be useful provides answer to who, what, where and when kind of questions. 
So knowledge in the sense that it is an application of data and information and answers the how kind of questions. Understanding is appreciation of why. Wisdom is the evaluated form of understanding. So ACOF indicates that the first four categories relate to the past. So they deal with what has been or what is known already. So only the fifth category, wisdom, deals with future because it incorporates vision and design. So with wisdom, people can create the future rather than just grasp the present and the past. So by achieving wisdom, but achieving wisdom is not very easy. People must move successfully through the other categories. So according to Aykoff, what he says is all the other categories deals with what is already known and what is already presented. You are learning the concepts which is already available and you are grasp, grasping the ideas of it. And with the wisdom, you are able to create future knowledge. So that is what he is meaning it. Yeah, isn't it? So, Akov indicates that the first four categories related to the past, as I mentioned before. So, they, uh, they deal with what has been known or what is already available. So, with wisdom, people can create future rather than just grasp concept, uh, the present and the past. Understanding is omitted since subsequent formulation I have not picked up in it. So, that is the key point here. So, Understanding is a category that was originally coined and originally framed by Akov, but over a period of time, it was omitted from the DIKW premise since there were no particular formulations or available on that particular part. Okay. So, Russell Akov in his paper describes the premise from the top down. Okay. So, wisdom is the top of the hierarchy. Descending from wisdom. Descending in the sense it's coming down from wisdom. There are understanding, knowledge, information and the bottom most layer is the data. So each of these includes the categories that fall below it as I mentioned before. In fact, the way Premid works as a method is from the bottom up. When you see from the bottom up, not the top down. So the process starts with data and ascends to wisdom. So it goes from the bottom to the top. Okay. So many theoreticians in computer science management, I management information system, and even in librarianship see information in terms of data, information, knowledge, wisdom, DIKW hierarchy or DIKW premed. Okay. So this hierarchy is referred to variously known as a knowledge hierarchy or information hierarchy and the knowledge premed. This is one of the fundamental and widely recognized and taken for granted models in the field of information and knowledge literatures. So it is often quoted or even used implicitly in definitions of data, information and knowledge in the information management, information systems and knowledge management literatures. So you might see in the papers, research papers of uh, what is in knowledge management or a paper describing information processing, you might see this model have been cited or quoted for a long period of time. So DIKW is data information knowledge and wisdom. It's a four layer hierarchy where each layer adds certain attributes over and above the previous one as well. So data is the most basic level. Information adds context to data. Knowledge adds how to use the information and wisdom adds and when and why to use the information. You see, there is certain attributes added over each layer. So that's how this pyramid was formed. So DIKW is useful to understanding analysis and the importance and limits of these conceptual works. So it is used primarily in the fields of IS, information science and KM, knowledge management. In knowledge science, we have to, what do you say, furthermore, make difference between explicit knowledge and tacit knowledge. I'm assuming you guys know what is explicit and tacit. Explicit is the knowledge which is available readily and tacit is knowledge which is not apparently visible, isn't it? So as usual, computer and IT technology easily deal with explicit knowledge as it is readily available, but tacit knowledge hardly as because it is not apparently visible and you need to capture it using some techniques. So Zenly builds this hierarchy by equating data, information, knowledge and wisdom to 
no nothing, no what, no how, and no why respectively. So that means when you equate this, uh, according to him, according to Zen Lee, he said, sir, data is no nothing. Information means no what, knowledge means no how, and wisdom to no why. Okay, he equates these four DIKW hierarchy to no nothing, no what, no how, and no why. So, it is the DIKW model is a graphical representation of how knowledge can be uh, organized within a particular institution or organization. So, it describes how data can be processed, transformed into information, knowledge and wisdom. So, you start from the data and finally you end up in wisdom. So, this model of transforming data into wisdom can be viewed from two different angles. That is, contextual, contextual and understanding. So, as far as the contextual part, one moves from a pace of gathering data, gathering data parts, the connection of raw parts, that's the information. First, you gather the, what do you say, gather the data and you form the connection between that raw data. The formation of whole meaningful content becomes the knowledge and then you conceptualize and join those whole meaningful contents. So, that is what the wisdom you gain in terms of conceptual concept. From the understanding point of view, this premise can also be seen as a process starting with researching, observing, doing, interacting and even reflecting. You see the same model is viewed in terms of two different perspectives. One is a conceptual one, one is the understanding one. So they also can be represented in terms of time as well. So for instance, the data information and knowledge levels can be seen as the past and the wisdom can be seen as the future as I mentioned before. So, this is the graphical and the model representation of DIKW hierarchy. So, we will see what is DIKW hierarchy exactly. So, as I mentioned, you can see the context part on the left hand side of the pyramid and the understanding part on the right hand side of the pyramid. So, this uh, picture will give you a clear understanding of how this model has been viewed in terms of its representation. Okay. So, now we will look at what do you mean by data and information. So, as I mentioned, data is raw. It simply exists and has no significance beyond its existence, right? So, it can exist in any form. It may be usable. It may not be usable. It does not have any meaning of itself. So, in computer Balance, a spreadsheet starts out by holding data, isn't it? You type the rows and columns by numbers or whatever it is. You start by filling in this data. The information on the other hand is the data that has been given meaning by way of relational connection. So, this meaning can be useful but does not have to be actually. This meaning can be useful but it doesn't necessarily need to be useful. Again, in the same computer parlance, uh, RDM, RDBMS, relational database makes information from the data that stores within it. So, when we go to the examples of this DIKW model, I think you'll get a clear understanding of what data, information, knowledge and wisdom is all about, isn't it? So, knowledge is the appropriate collection of information such as its intent is to be useful, right? So, with knowledge, you need to do something. So, you have some knowledge, acquired, grasped the concepts and you have some knowledge about that particular topic or thing. So, it's a deterministic process. When someone memorizes information, that means they have amazed knowledge. So, mostly what they do is the students, the school or the college students or the graduates, they do that, right? They memorize the information though that they can replicate in the exam or test or assessment or whatever it may be. So, it is said that they have amazed knowledge. So, this knowledge has useful meaning to them, but it does not provide for in and of itself and integration such would infer further knowledge, right? They have just, what do you say? They have just grasped the concept of uh, by hearting or memorizing the information so that they have that knowledge and it doesn't have further value behind that grasping of concept, right? Unless they add some substantial new information or new knowledge to the existing body, it doesn't prove any new value or new addition to it, isn't it? For example, 
elementary school children memorize a mass of knowledge of the timetable. Yes, timetable is already available. They have just memorized and amazed those information and they can even replicate it without looking at that particular timetable. That doesn't mean that they are adding it new, right? They are just grasping the knowledge. They are processing the information, isn't it? So they can tell you that 2 into 2 is 4 because they have amazed that knowledge. It is already included in the timetable. But when asked what is 1, 2, 6, 7 into 300, they cannot respond correctly and quickly because that entry is not in the timetable. But to correctly answer such a question, it requires a true cognitive and analytical ability that is only encompassed in the next level. That is what we call it as understanding. So knowledge is all about processing, memorizing and amazing information, right? Whatever which is available already, you are processing it, you are amazing it, right? So to understand how it works, you need a bit of understanding, right? To know how it works, you need a bit of understanding how the concept works. So in computer parlance, most of the applications we use, this modeling and simulations, we call AI and whatever it is, have some type of stored knowledge. So, next is the understanding part. So, it is an interpolative and probabilistic process. It is cognitive and analytical. Okay. So, it is a process by which one can take knowledge and synthesize new knowledge from the previously held knowledge. So, that is what I am talking about. So, already you have some knowledge within you. So, you need, you can synthesize. Once you understand the raw concept of that knowledge, you can synthesize new knowledge from the existing body of so the difference between understanding and knowledge is the difference between learning and memorizing. So this is how you need to identify the difference between knowledge and understanding. So you need to understand the learning and memorizing difference first and then you can understand the learning, knowledge and understanding difference. People who have an understanding can undertake useful actions because they can synthesize new knowledge or in some cases at least new information from what is previously known, isn't it? So, understanding is very much essential to come to a bit of a decision to create a new knowledge based on the existing information. But only with knowledge, you are dealing with information and data and facts, right? So, you cannot, you cannot, what do you say, you cannot go beyond the book. That's what they say, right? So, with understanding, oh, this is how this concept will work. So, this is how it will work everywhere. Once you understand the root level, grassroot level concept, it will, it will be easy for you to make some decisions or to add some new knowledge to the existing body of knowledge. So, that is what understanding is all about. It can build upon currently held information, knowledge and even the understanding itself. So, in terms of computer parlance, AI system, artificial intelligence systems process understanding in the sense they are able to synthesize new knowledge from the previously stored information and knowledge. So, whatever knowledge, information you have already within you, you need to create a new information or knowledge from that. So, that part is all about understanding. So, hope this is clear with you. So, the next part is the wisdom part. It's again understand uh, uh, it's an extrapolative and non-deterministic and non-probabilistic so it is exactly opposite to what we saw in understanding so it calls upon the previous levels of consciousness and specifically upon types of human pro programming as well it includes ethical codes moral aspects and values everything etc so it becomes to give us understanding about which there has been previously no understanding in doing so but goes far beyond understanding itself, isn't it? It is the essence of philosophical pro probing. So unlike the previous four levels, it asks questions to which there is no easily achievable answer and in some cases which there can be no humanly known answer period. So wisdom, therefore, the process by which we also discern or judge between right and wrong, good and bad. So that is why I already mentioned wisdom uh, is not easy to acquire. Because it goes uh, beyond all these four concepts. Uh, with, with, with understanding, you know that we have some information, we have some data, information, we have some existing template so that uh, we can form, we can accumulate, uh, assume, ass, uh, assimilate knowledge. And based on that knowledge, uh, once we understand the concept, we can make some new synthesis or take some decision. But if you see this, if you see wisdom, it's about understanding, but there has been no previously 
no understanding. That means you are generating wisdom based on certain values and goals. So that is why it takes time and it takes practice to accumulate wisdom. So you will see all these concepts with a little example so that uh, you can get to know about this DAKW hierarchy a bit more detailed way. So you can see that this diagram represents the transition from data to information to knowledge and finally to wisdom. So and its understanding that support the transition from each stage to the next. So understanding, as you can see, it's not a separate level of its own. So you can see that uh, from the graph, you can see that so data to information is all about understanding relations. From information to the knowledge, it's all about understanding the patterns. And from knowledge to wisdom, it's all about understanding values and principles. That's why it is mentioned that understanding is not a separate level of its own. It, uh, comes everywhere. It supports the entire transition process. So now we will see this DIKW that is data, information, knowledge and wisdom concept with the example. So as you can see in the figure, data comes in the form of customers' grocery buying habits. So in order to be of practical value, so the data must be transformed by identifying relationships between the objects that is presented right so let's assume that if we were given these grocery lists one at a time let's say that we have given only list to one an examination of this list to one what are they apples bananas papers and pineapples would lead a reader to note that they are just fruits or vegetables and they are arranged in some order maybe alphabetical order right when you give a uh, give a data of just uh, the list to one. So the reader, they will assume just uh, they have given a list of vegetables and they are arranged in some order, maybe in alphabetical. That's what they will assume. So however, is this finding either important or relevant to this grocery store? So only the list of uh, alphabets and list of uh, vegetables or fruits in alphabetical order. Is this information? Is this information relevant to a grocery store? I don't think so. It is not relevant. Maybe it may be relevant to a child who is learning about fruits or a kid who is learning alphabets or something. Maybe relevant to them. But it's definitely not relevant to a grocery store, isn't it? We find it is not sufficient enough. There is no sufficient amount of data to find anything worthwhile that is needed for a stationery or a, a grocery or a provision store, isn't it? So what we do is we add one more list to the existing data. So now we have uh, in the list two, we can see we have avocados, onions, bananas, and apples. So now we can discount the alphabetical ordering assumption. So now we can see that no, these are fruits, but they are not in alphabetical order because one more layer of data is added to it. And still vegetable fruit and that connection is still follows because even uh give, even after two lists list one and uh, list two we can just remove the alphabetical assumption only but not the vegetable fruit assumption because these are images and the lists of vegetables or fruits however it still might be too early to see any pattern because there are only two lists so far so it is find it is very early stages to see or identify any patterns so when we add one more list uh, with carrots, bananas, apples and pumpkins, uh, it should be a little bit more clear that apples and bananas occur often together, which provides us the information we are exactly looking for. So if you see the three lists together, you can see banana and apple everywhere in all the three lists. So that is the common pattern we are finding here. In all the three lists, banana is visible and apple is visible. So we can at least say that, oh, okay, so apples and banana occur often together. So that is one information we are obtaining from this list of three sets of data. So maybe while this is simple and a controlled example, in real life, uh, transactions may be tons and tons of lists and tons and tons of items. Like there will be thousands of unique shoppers accumulating in the millions of visits. One shopper might uh, visit millions of times. That's why they are saying the culminating factor here. So this is a controlled example with just three lists to so provide you with an idea how this DAKW concept works. So from this overwhelming amount of mass amount of data, 
these otherwise unknown patterns are not so obvious and not so clear or visible and we must rely on the computational tools to identify them right so since there are only three three lists i can easily say that ah apple and banana are occurring together when i give you thousands hundreds and thousands of lists we cannot do it manually right that is why we rely on compute tools that is what they are saying about so this is the foundation of data mining so data mining is nothing but finding hidden patterns from the existing body of data okay so while the value of information may depend upon this timeliness accessibility reliability and availability it can be also argued that it value is based on users need that is very much important users need defines the value of information so let's take this observation the example observation so how we gain information from the data of three list that the observation is apples and bananas occur at occur frequently together you can clearly see that everywhere there is a banana picture and everywhere there is a apple picture so we can say that okay apples and bananas are occurring together frequently so although this relation is not entirely useful at this stage at least we found out some pattern so we have just found out the basic abstracting so that in the next level of hierarchy when we move on to the knowledge level we can add some additional value or meaning to this existing body of information isn't it so knowledge is the aggregation of related information that forms a set of expectations or rules okay so which will provide a clear understanding of what this information is talking about so so this level of hierarchy begins with the formation of rule based systems which we can allow individuals to expand their own knowledge while also benefiting the organization so individuals have their own processing of information and they will share their knowledge according to their grasping of the concept which will in turn overall benefit the organization they are working for so now in the figure we can form an associative rule that links apples and bananas together so you can you can form this association like now if i see apple i will also see bananas so this interweaving of data information and knowledge permit the extrapolation of different levels in the hierarchy so while the precise definition of data information and knowledge are still a matter of debate so everyone has given their own opinion in terms of this definition wisdom can still be viewed as a grasping of the overall situation so in this figure you can see that wisdom can be depicted as the realization that increase profit so i am talking about a grocery store here so what will this grocery store uh, do with this kind of information data or knowledge they want that they want to increase sales eventually they want to maximize their profit isn't it a store needs to bring in more customers so that they can get their products sold and they can maximize profit so that will be their ultimate aim right so if you see if you see the wisdom here in terms of grocery store is that realization and increasing profit that will be the ultimate goal so they can be how they can be obtained from this data they can obtain by cross merchandising two products that have a relation in consumer buying habits so these are the buying habits of the consumer so once you do this cross merchandising of uh, the acquired knowledge so we saw that apples and bananas are have an associative pattern they are linked everywhere so this is what consumer buying behavior is all about so when you study the behavior of the customer or the consumer you will get an idea where to place this item so it will in turn enhance your what is a sales sales uh, sales number isn't it so finally data in simple words data represents a fact or statement or even without relation to any other thing so we will say see this example think of data as a fact without any relation to other aspects so i can say it is raining so it is a data so it is raining it is a data i am playing it is a data so now we come to the second layer information it embodies the understanding of a relationship of some sort possibly cause and effect so it is ra raining is the data so the temperature has dropped 15 degrees then it started raining you see here the temperature the dropping of the temperature is the 
understanding of the relationship. So why it is raining? Because the temperature is dropped by 15 degrees, it started raining. So you embody the understanding from the data. So this is what information is all about. When you come to the next level, that is a knowledge level, it represents a pattern that connects and generally provides a high level of predictability. Okay, so that means you find a pattern from the information and you will also predict what will kind of happen next as well. So if the humidity is very high and the temperature drops substantially, the atmosphere is often unlikely to be able to hold the moisture, so it rains. You can see that. So see, based on the information data and information, you connect the pattern. So if the humidity becomes so high, at the same time, temperature also drops, what will happen? The atmosphere will find it difficult to hold the moisture, moisture in the cloud. So automatically, it will pour down. So this is what knowledge is all about. So we started with the basic data and the basic fact training. So why it is raining? Because the temperature dropped down, it started raining. When the temperature drops down and the humidity becomes high simultaneously, the atmosphere will find it difficult to hold down the moisture. So automatically it pours down. See how we have connected all these dots together so far. And finally, when we come to the wisdom, it embodies everything, understanding of all the principles, values within that knowledge that are essentially the basis for knowledge without being what it is. You need not to say everything. You mean that you understand it, everything. It is systemic. It rains because it rains. You need not to explain. Okay, you need not to explain because you, you encompass all these levels within yourself, right? It rains because it rains. We know that all this process happens. Understanding of all the interactions that happen between raining, evaporation, air current, uh, temperature gradient changes and raining. It rains because it rains, right? So this is how we connect the layer of dots between data, information, knowledge and wisdom. So yet there is still a question whether it's a pattern knowledge and when it, is it noise? So knowledge is a pattern or knowledge is a noise. There is a question still going on. So let's uh, discuss this with an example. So consider the following. Can you able to read it? Even I can't read it, right? So that is because uh, that is because it is not written in English. It is written in some other language, isn't it? So it is quite likely this sequence represents 100% novelty. Novelty in the sense it's unique and something new, which means it's equivalent to noise. Equivalent to noise. What do you mean by noise? Some kind of disturbance, right? So there is no foundation for you to connect with the pattern because you don't understand the grassroots level of what it is written here, right? So yet the trans yet the tra statements are quite meaningful. Yes, it, they are meaningful as some people might understand this translation with reveals. Okay, not everyone might be able to understand this, but there are some people who might understand this translation, isn't it? So they are, in fact, what is it? Newton's three laws of motion. Just because I cannot read it, you cannot read it, does it mean that it is not knowledge? Is something knowledge if you can't understand it? So that is what the debate is all about. So now consider the following. So now consider the following. Let's take this one by one. I have a box, okay. So the box is uh, three feet wide, three feet deep inside and six feet high. The box is very heavy, okay. So the box has a door on front of it. It has a door. I have given, I have told you I have a box. I have given you the dimensions of the box. I have given you the weight of the box and it has a door in front of it. When I open the box, it has food inside it. I have given what is inside the box as well. It is colder inside. It is colder inside the box than it is outside. That means when you open the door, you will feel a chillness inside, right? You usually find the box in the kitchen where this box will be placed kitchen in the kitchen. So there is a smaller compartment uh, inside the box with ice in it. Okay. So within that box, inside when you open the door, there is a small compartment where you can place all the ices, ice cubes, okay? So when you open the door, the light comes on. See, when you open the front door, the light also switches on automatically. When you move this box, you find lots of dirt, okay? You will find lots of dust and dirt underneath it. So junk has a real habit of collecting on top of this box as well. Did you find out what is this? Of course, it is a refrigerator. You knew it, right? At some point in the sequence, you connected the pattern and understood it was a description of a refrigerator, right? 
So from that point, each statement only added confirmation to your understanding. For example, if you are understood by uh, the, what do you say, if you are understood by the uh, what do you say? Uh, point you usually find the box in the kitchen. In, from that point, if you have understood, oh, this is definitely a refrigerator. That means after the subsequent points, which is coming after, you usually find the box in the kitchen. The other four points are only adding confirmation to your understanding. That means you have already identified what this box is about. So if you live in a society that you have never seen a refrigerator, you might still be scratching your head as to what the sequence of statement refers to, isn't it? Some people, they don't know. They they have never seen a refrigerator. They might have not got access to it. So they will definitely scratching their head. What on hell they are talking about? So what on earth they are talking about uh, this box actually? So it depends on where the people lives as well, right? So also realize I could have provided view with above statements in any order. There is no necessary order. I started with a random order. It can be of any order. I can jumble these sentences and still at some point the pattern would have connected, isn't it? If I say that when you open the door, uh, there will be lights coming on there. You can place ice uh, cubes in it. If I say at the first also, you might have identified it. Still, you can see that you can connect the patterns. So when the pattern is connected, the sequence of statement represented is exactly knowledge, isn't it? So to me, all the statements that convey nothing they are simply 100% confirmation of what I already knew as I knew what I was describing before even I started. So this is what DIKW concept is all about. So kindly go through these uh, references. These are the references I have used to prepare my presentations. If you want a detailed understanding of uh, this concept and hierarchy, please feel free to go through this uh, research articles and references. So we'll get a broader perspective of this concepts. So thank you.